Good morning friends and welcome back to NPTEL online certification course on public speaking. All of you uh, might remember that you are now in the fifth week and we are dealing with the role of non-verbal in public speaking. In the previous lecture, uh, we made a brief uh, mention of what non-verbal communication is. I think here I must add that nonverbal communication can be classified into certain areas and the very first was that of kinesics which we have already discussed. So, the various uh, forms of nonverbal communication can be kinesics, proxemics, haptics, chronomics, paralanguage and meta communication. I must here tell you that now with all these lectures being tuned to you, your speech anxiety might be a little bit on the receding side. I mean till now you might have developed a sort of confidence, but the confidence will be more when you also come to know about certain truths, certain facts of how nonverbal plays a very important role in making a public speaker effective. In the previous lecture, we talked about how to make use of one's body, which we call body language, how one can provide a proper body language when one is communicating. But as a speaker, one also needs to understand how apart from kinesics, proxemics are also important. Now, you might be thinking about what this proxemics is. Now, before we come to analyze proxemics, let us take a beautiful quote by Soren Kierkegaard, the existential philosopher who says, language has time as its element, all other media have their space as their element. Now, he actually underlines the importance not only of time in language, but also of space in language and this importance of space we are going to understand in this lecture which I have titled as proxemics. Now, the word proxemics comes from proximity, proximity. By proximity, we mean closeness, nearness. So, this term was coined by cultural anthropologist named Edward T. Hall. Edward T. Hall is a big name. And one of his famous books that I came across was The Silent Language. The Silent Language. You, you look at the title of the book that there are many forms of language which are silent, but they have a lot to contribute in making something very important. So, in his famous book, The Hidden Dimension, which he wrote in 1963, he actually has made a mention of this term proxemics. Proxemics, as I said earlier, comes from the word proximity or nearness or closeness. It is about how people understand and use space in a cultural context. When a public speaker starts speaking, should you also not pay attention to how much of a space is required? The space not only between the audience and the speaker, the space also between the microphone and the man, the space also when you are delivering a talk to a big group, to a small group. Hall actually defines proxemics as the interrelated observations and theories of man's use of space as a specialized elaboration of culture. 
Now, when you see two people sitting very close to each other, do you not derive a meaning? You derive that they are intimate with each other. But the other day when you found your friend moving away from you and maintaining a distance, did you not get the language that perhaps something was wrong? Fine. We can at times also find many people walking hand in hand, having no space in and between. That also talks a lot about relationship. The space communication can also be considered as relationship communication. This word proximix comes from proximity and then phonemics. I mean the space that you maintain when you are speaking. Now, proximix can also be called as spatial communication, meaning thereby this spatial also is related to space communication, where any speaker, any communicator needs to understand importance of space in communication. Imagine yourself being in a classroom and you will find that there is a space between uh, the teacher and the taught. There are rows, I mean lines, they also denote all, a lot and there are several physical settings also, they also come under space. They also get a lot of cues and clues about the meaning of space in communication. So, it is a close study or awareness of physical space. You can look at two people talking to each other and the distance, fine. When you talk to a stranger, I think the space between you is a bit far, but when you talk to an intimate person, you actually move close by. But my dear friends, while discussing culture in communication, we have already discussed how when people of two cultures, how they also derive meaning out of the space distances. There are certain behavioral norms also. Uh, there are also cultural variations and proxemics as a field of nonverbal communication tries to ground the relationship between man and the cultural dimension which is actually one in which both man and his environment participate in molding each other. Imagine you are going to listen to a lecture and you find the hall packed, fine. The moment you go, you do not find any space, any place to sit and even if you anyway manage to get it, will you stay there for a long time? You will not. You sometimes also find the speaker also struggling for his own space. The speaker finds it very difficult because the speaker also expects some space where he can make movements. We have already talked about it in the previous lecture while we are talking about the use of body, is not it? So, and man by nature actually wants space. Every person, oh, every individual wants space. Nowadays, there are talks about personal space, social space, is not it? So, when we talk about space, Edward Hall divides human perception of spatiality or space into two broad categories. What are these two broad categories? One is personal space. No, at times you want that there should not be anyone around you. You want to have more space where you can allow yourself to relax. And if there is an interference, you are actually hurt. You, you actually are feel quite different. And then another type of space is territory. Every human being, even you know when we talk about territory actually suggests the critical distance around which flight or fight reaction takes place. In a crowded place, think of it, in a crowded place, you do not get the space that you require and you actually want to get away from that place. It is actually a question of flight or fight reaction. Is not it? So, every human being wants a sort of territory around. The other day, why you felt anxious when somebody else sat on the chair, you always used to sit in, my dear friend? Because you felt threatened 
your space was being occupied. In the corporate world, you will find that there are space allocations for everyone because that denotes, that actually gives you a meaning, a significance of the person as to how much importance does he or she have in the organization. So, this personal space is understood as the distance at which the individual could be touched physically. I mean, we have already uh, perhaps talked about the cultural zones. When you are in a cultural zone which is intimate, so people of your intimate relations, they only can enter that space. But space keeps on varying with the sort of relationship. We may have a personal zone, we may have an intimate zone. So, the man's boundaries begins and ends with his skin says Hall. Hall also at one place had said that time talks and space speaks. I mean when a person does not come in time, do you not derive some meaning out of it? And when a person does not allow others to have this space around, once again you try to extract meaning out of it. So, the concept of territory which is associated with animals and birds, but at the same time this meaning of territory actually allows an individual for a flight or fight reaction. So, interpersonal spaces because when we are communicating between our two groups, you as a speaker and the other members as audience, you perhaps are trying to find out what sort of space, here the space uh, that we are going to talk about, we actually want a larger space. Now, here as I was mentioning uh, the role of space zones. So, intimate zone, you can find how a person who actually has a sort of relationship with you and this intimate space is 1.5 fine to 0 0.45 meter, is not it? So, it is actually, it has a sort of confinement. Then personal space between 1.5 feet to 4 feet. Now, friends, family members, fine, near relatives, they only are allowed uh, to enter into such a space. Then we have social space where the distance, finally the distance widens and the distance is from 4 feet to 12 feet. Earlier in personal space, we had 1.5 feet to 4 feet, but now depending upon our relationship, uh, the distance also widens and the space also uh, widens in order to give us more meaning. And then public space, most of the talks actually take place in public space where the distance is more. My dear friends, have you not realized that there have been times when these spaces have been violated and the violation of space has resulted in giving rise to very unpleasant situations. So, history is a witness to it and even today when these space zones are violated, there are chances, apprehensions of some untoward accidents. Now, when we talk about intimate distance, during this intimate distance you will find there is an overload of sensory inputs. That is why the distance between the audience and the speaker is a little bit because you know one has to be aware of. One can find in intimate space, one can find the overwhelming reaction from the receiver, but if the space is more are you in a position to understand, uh, are you in a position to observe the sensory inputs of the person sitting at the last bench, fine. The output type in closed phase is highly either positive or negative. Either the person sitting just in front can give you a positive or a negative and in both the case if it is negative you know it actually is going to destroy the entire soul and it can create a sort of inconvenience for the speaker. Then there is far phase, I mean distance, 
6 to 18 inches, phase of cultural difference, especially while greeting gestures. You might have found that uh, when two uh, people of two cultures meet, uh, they maintain a sort of cultural space. Sometimes it is less, sometimes it is more, depending upon the cultures from which these people come. There are at times chances of offenses. There are chances of or risks of offending or getting offended. We might have talked about how when two Arabs meet each other, they are either very close or they appear to be very distant depending upon what the people of other culture carries, a sort of cultural uh, meaning which is based on space. Now we come to personal distance. It is actually as the word person, so it is actually a very small protective sphere where you know you cannot restrict yourself from a sort of touch from body bubble, fine. The phage is very close, 1.5 to 2.5 feet and it expresses the intimacy of the relationship. That is why when we talk about proxemics, we also call it relationship communication. Say for example, uh, a couple maintaining the sort of distance with each other, uh, that can come under personal. But then when it is close, you find the other person is kept at an arm's length, fine. And the last point for establishing physical contact, you do not want on there is no possibility, fine. And there are certain regulations also about sensory inputs. But since you are a public speaker, you will at times come across social zones. In social zones, mostly touch is reduced. There is less chance of touch, not only according to the regulations, but as per the demands also. And touch is reduced or entirely removed at this zone. In this regard, the speaker has a difficult time. Why? The speaker is expected uh, to respond to everyone or the speaker's voice should reach everyone. Of course, there are facilities nowadays of technical gadgets, uh, say for example, uh, the microphones and all which can help us. And in this regard, your voice plays a primary role in communication. You might have come across certain situations where the audience members can tell you that could you, could you please raise your voice a little so that we may hear. Why? this results because of the distance that is there between the two parties. So in this regard, the closed phages, when there is interpersonal business zone, I mean when uh, you sit uh, for a sort of negotiation, you will find uh, the distance is not that much, especially in most of the work relationships and social gatherings uh, you can find. But then there is always a chance and one should uh, always try to remain very sensitive that you are not going to interfere or violate other spaces. Because uh, we should be aware of the far phage where the distance will be between 7 to 12 feet and it is considered to be a formal business zone which also as public speaker we ought to maintain mostly during interviews, during meetings and during conferences these things get a sort of primacy. And the last is public zone. In public zone, your sensory shift switchover occurs with loss of familiarity. You do not know who the audience members are. It is actually a crowd of 200 people, fine. You do not know uh, them. And actually they are uh, full. I mean the capacity is full. So the close phase which should be 12 to 25 feet, that is also considered to be close. In this sort of setting, as a speaker, what one should do? Careful choice of words and phrasing as per the advice of Edward T. Hall. Edward T. Hall says that when you are in a public zone and even if it appears to be a close phase, you need to not only be careful of the selection of your words, 
but also of your phrasing because everything that you say may be heard. Of course, the style has to be formal and then when it becomes a far phage, the distance will once again increase and the distance set around public speakers. Now, there is a loss and the loss is the loss of the subtlety of the voice. No, the excellence of your voice here is lost because as a public speaker, you every now and then want that your voice should reach everyone, is not it? And here, there is every possibility that your non-verbal communication actually requires a lot of expectations. We have already talked about the deficiency in verbal can be compensated by the efficiency of non-verbal. I mean your body accent has to work here uh, because uh, there is not such facility where your voice can reach each and everyone the way the people sitting in the front can receive. In this regard, high uses of kinesics because what cannot be understood through words can be understood through non-words and in this non-words your body language. The, the way a person uh, does a sort of locative gesture or an emphatic gesture or a descriptive gesture while he or she is trying to define, trying to analyze uh, the size of an object or whatsoever. So, it is very important that one makes uh, the movements of one's hands in such a situation. Now, when a person communicates, either he communicates horizontally or he communicates vertically. When you communicate horizontally, you are aware of space zones, but when you communicate vertically, you must be aware of power zones. You appear, uh, I mean here in this case the speaker becomes more important and that is why I sometimes think the speaker is given the elevated position, is not it? There is a rostrum, fine and, and the speaker gets more importance because uh, the need of the hour is that the speaker should be seen. Now, what is the philosophy behind it? Many scholars who have done a lot of research in the area of proxemics, they say that audience members expect the speakers to be seen and that is why from the toe to the top, if they can see the speaker, they are not only going to make easy the task of the speaker, but they are also uh, going to make it easier for themselves. Because it is a question of credibility and rapport. The moment you create a rapport uh, simply by passing a smile or by making yourself visible, the task becomes easier my dear friends. But when the culture things comes in and between, then there at times can be a dilemma depending upon the way people of one culture actually have got meanings for the other cultures. People in an elevator in North America, they can be very close, but at the same time, if they have grown in Italy, it will completely be different. In this regard, I can give you an example which I read in one of the books where one person who was invited uh, for a talk and uh, the, the people who went to greet him or to escort him, they were two in number and they sat in the front seat, whereas the rear seat was empty and the invited guest was put in the rear seat. Now, what happened? The speaker, I mean the invited guest kept on thinking throughout why when there was a lot of space, why these two people could sit in the front seat by the side of the driver. I mean he got the clue in the next meeting when once again he was called and there again the same thing happened this time three people came to escort him and all the three sat in the front seat. 
the speaker or the invited guest felt it quite awkward and then when he tried to understand it with the help of some of the communication coaches. So, he would said that these people believe that you and I are close friends. The meaning is that we always allow more room to the guests, fine. Now, we also come across such sort of experiences in many cultures, fine, and it is here that culture plays a very dominant role in communication. Now, here you can find uh, the people of uh, two context cultures, people of high context cultures, they actually uh, find the meaning in totality, whereas people of low context cultures, they only believe in words, tones and gestures. That is why as I might have discussed in uh, the lecture on culture, that people of high context culture, they believe while they make a meaning, they make a meaning out of the word choice, phrasing, words, gestures, tone, environment, social status and posture. People of Japan especially, you will find that they are people of high context culture and they give too much primacy uh, to the meaning which is based on all these factors. So, it is it's very difficult when you are communicating across cultures. As I have said earlier and uh, let me once again uh, make a mention of what Albert Mehravian says that a status manifests itself by relaxed posture and way of interacting. That is why you can find some people when they are having a relaxed posture, especially uh, the CEOs and others, they actually have more space in the office. Most nonverbal communication at work in US reinforces power. I have already made a mention of uh, one episode where it is said you and I are close friends. Now, my dear friends, there are other perceptions of space also, visual space, auditory space, fine, visual space is uh, something that you can see, auditory space, then olfactory space, I mean smell, thermal space, fine, then tactile space, touch. So, proper spatial awareness through a different sensorial medium is essential for a speaker to recognize the situational context and changes. Enhanced perception of spaces leads to increased output in communication. Now, you might also find a difference that if the physical property of a room, if the rows are properly arranged, if there are proper windows, fine. So, as a speaker, if you have been able to uh, understand everything that it is quite comfortable for the audience, because as a speaker, you want that your content or your matter has to be heard by them. So, now, how is space in public speaking? All of us as speakers be conscious of others near us, especially if they are behind us. A speaker is prepared to be unaware of, most of the speakers are quite unaware of the physical surroundings. That is why, let me tell you here that before the day of the speech or before the time of the speech, as a speaker it is better if you can go and check the acoustics, if you can check the physical setting. Also find uh, that will you be able to face the audience in such a manner and the host organization. Uh, always welcomes your suggestion and even you know uh, any change at the end can also be uh, brought into. A speaker should become conscious of how close he should stand to the audience so that he can give full concentration to the audience. It is also easier to understand the speech of a person one can see. I was talking about the visibility. As a speaker, let yourself be seen because when you are seen, you are heard my dear friend. In this regard, uh, a, a very famous statement uh, made by Christopher Turk in Effective Speaking says, Anglo sections stand at a reserved distance, reserved distance when conversing. During conversation, uh, they actually make a reserved distance, Anglo sections. 
while the Spanish and Italian peoples stand much closer. At international conferences, you can often see Americans and British people edging backwards. They will always try to keep themselves backwards, pursued by Italians and Spaniards trying to get to their usual degrees of closeness. They will always try to come near and both the British people and the American people, they will always try to withdraw because uh, they have a different meaning associated with the space. Now, before we come uh, to wind up this talk, but let me here tell you that when you have already made a sort of physical setting of the entire room, please also ensure that if there is any interference in and between, that may actually mar the entire show. So, it is better to check the room and physical arrangement in advance. Request for change if it is required, ensure proper ventilation. Sometimes or the other you will find uh, they are gasping for breath. So, if you can find it earlier that whether there is a proper ventilation or not, this will make your task easier and this will also make the time of the audience members also amenable. Be aware of audience members cultural background. Push the rostrum because most of us are habituated to be on the rostrum, fine. So, push the rostrum to one side and stand in front of the table so that you may be seen properly, so that you may be judged properly, so that you may be heard properly. Because one thing that is very important in terms or with reference to public speakers that they have worked hard to drive home their points and only because of a certain lapse in terms of physical setting either of chair or either of the arrangement that may actually destroy the entire so. So, as a speaker we need uh, to be aware of all these things. Nowadays, uh, we also come across digital proxemics uh, where you know intercultural communication is a marker and uh, with the modern day trends moving towards di digital culture, we also have to ensure how to make utilization of a space when we are communicating digitally. As culture changes, so also changes the rule of proxemics, says MacArthur. Have you not been aware of uh, the talk uh, of smart cities, digital classrooms, sentient objects, wearable e-gadgets? All these are actually going to make or mar the entire content of a speaker's speech if he or she is not conscious of it. These conditions can apply to our communication spaces because they have actually been redefined fine in terms of proxemics on several levels my dear friend. So, you will at times find that if you are not conscious of all these space meanings perhaps you are not going to be successful as a speaker. But before I bring this talk to an end, uh, let me make a mention of one of uh, the lines from uh, one of the famous films uh, by Nicholas Sparks, who in the lucky one says, proximity breeds familiarity and familiarity breeds comfort. Meaning thereby, as a speaker you should try to create a sort of familiarity and while creating familiarity, one also has to be conscious of a space meanings. One has to be conscious of the proximic behavior, not only of a speaker, but also of the receivers. I think you will take these things into consideration before you go to make your speech, presentation, interview or debate and these will help you a lot in making you successful as a public speaker. With this, may I take your leave and leave the space for you. Thank you very much.